What's up all, John with EDM Prod here and today we are diving deep into drum rack. By the end of this video, you're going to have a complete understanding of every aspect of drum rack, including a few less than obvious features that make this instrument even more powerful than it appears to be. Let's jump on in. So first off, what is drum rack? Well, you can think of it as basically a collection of samplers, up to 128 of them, each one of them placed on one of these square pads we see right here. Each of these samplers responds to a single incoming MIDI note. So when you play that MIDI note, the drum rack knows to trigger the sampler that's on that pad and play that sound back. Let's just jump on in here and I wanna show you how you can load up one of the core kits, which is a pre-made kit that comes with Ableton. If you navigate in your browser over to drums, you should see the 505, 606, 707 core kits. Double click one of these to load it and you'll be presented with a basic kit, usually with 16 different sounds, one on each one of these pads. Each of these drum sounds can be previewed either by clicking the play button that's on each pad or by playing on your MIDI controller the key associated with each drum pad. When you play a MIDI note to trigger these drum sounds, you'll see over here in this little sidebar, a square light up, which is associated with the incoming MIDI note that you're playing. This lets you know if you're playing too low or too high, in which case you could shift the octave up or down to get to the section that contains the samples here. If you find yourself looking at a drum rack with no samples and you're wondering what's going on, all you have to do is click and drag up or down over here in this sidebar to get to the section with the lit squares. Every time we have one of these highlighted gray squares, that means that there is a sample on that square. If you just simply click and drag up and down, you move in groups of four, but if you hold command or control, then you can move one row at a time, up or down like that. For most of these kits, the default lowest pad is going to be C1. But if you're not sure and you'd like to see which note is assigned to each one of these pads, all you have to do is come over here and click this little chain button and then click the IO button that appears underneath. When you click the pad, it'll show you the chain associated with that pad. And under this row that says receive, you'll see the note that this drum pad is listening for to play the sample back. If you'd like to switch this, let's say I wanna make this note C3 instead of C1, I can click it, scroll down to C3, and all of a sudden our kick disappeared. Where did it go? Well, it didn't really disappear, it just got moved up higher because each of these squares represents an incoming MIDI note. So therefore it moved the bass drum here onto C3. You can also click and drag this around like I just did to move it to any incoming MIDI note. And now if I play C3, I can trigger that kick drum. To move it back to where it was, click and drag over into the side, which will allow you to scroll up and down in blocks of four, and then just drag it back onto the original pad. More on this input output section later. For now, let's close it up and I wanna show you how to make a drum pattern now that we've loaded up our kit. On your new drum rack channel, create a new MIDI clip by highlighting a section of time, holding Shift, Command, and pressing M. Now we can see our piano roll. And when you have a drum rack on a piano roll, what you end up seeing is not every single note like you normally would, but instead just the note that has an associated chain containing a sample. All of the samples are labeled right here. And to program our kick, all we have to do is just double click a few in like that. Here's our snare sound, which we can hear if we press this little headphone button and click the note associated with it. We'll put a snare on two and four. And we have a closed hat. I'll put this on every eighth note. Now it's really amazing that Live has all these pre-built kits for you. And if you've downloaded any of the packs here, there's a ton more that aren't just the immediate core kits that come with Live. So this is a great way to get started and get making a beat very quickly, but let's dive into making our own drum kit from scratch. To add a blank drum rack, all you have to do is go to the drums section in the browser. And at the top, you're gonna find the drum rack. You can drag and drop that onto your MIDI channel and you'll be presented with a blank drum rack. Another way to create a drum rack is to right click the header of an existing sampler or simpler and choose group to drum rack from the menu. That will automatically place that sample on note C1 in a drum rack. 
To add a sample to this drum rack, all we have to do is navigate to one we want. Let's just go ahead and find a nice kick. Here's one from the EDM Starter Kit sample pack. And by the way, all of these sample packs you see here are available for free at edmprod.com. Go check it out. There's a link in the description of this video that'll take you right over to them. It's a nice chunky kick. I'll go ahead and throw this on C1. And we're gonna find maybe a clap and a hat. Got a nice tight hat. Put the closed hat right here and an open hat right here. Now you have our kick. and hats. Now the really cool thing about this is that you're not limited to just throwing samples on here. You can also throw instruments. Ableton's got these pretty awesome drum synths I like to use a lot. Let's just drag a snare onto here. And exactly the same way that a sample would be dropped onto a pad to create a sampler or a simpler, dropping on one of these synths simply throws that synth onto this pad. You can also throw third-party plugins on there. For example, kick three or any VST that you like. You can also apply effects to each of these on a chain by chain basis or a sound by sound basis. Let's say for example, I want a little reverb on this clap sound. That's as easy as finding a reverb that you like and dragging it on top of one of these pads. Now this clap has this hybrid reverb applied to it. But none of the other sounds have this reverb. Maybe you want a delay on this snare but none of the other sounds, drag and drop a delay. And there we go. So in this way, a drum rack is basically like working with a bunch of individual tracks as you would over here. Like if you're just putting them on audio tracks or individual MIDI tracks over in your main arrangement view section here. It allows us to tweak each one of these individually within the drum rack. Let's dive into the mixer section here. If we click the show hide chain list, that's gonna show us all of the chains and a bunch of basic mixer controls. We have the volume for each one of these individual chains, panning, mute, and solo. You can also hit tab to switch over to session view, click this little drop down menu right here on the drum rack and you'll be presented with each of these individual channels, including all of the effects that are on that channel. From here, you can go ahead and mix all of these using the faders. I wanna jump back over into the IO input output section that I briefly talked about earlier. Click this IO button and we're now presented with receive, play, and choke options. So as I mentioned earlier, receive is the MIDI note that that chain is listening for to trigger the sound that's on that chain. But play is the note that will be sent to the instrument. So for example, with this clap sound, it's listening for D sharp one, and then it's going to send note C3 to this simpler device. The reason why it defaults to C3 is because all of the samplers in Ableton use C3 as the default note that will play the sample back on its original pitch. But that doesn't mean it has to be C3. You could go ahead and raise this or lower it and that will play higher or lower notes as it sends higher values to the sampler or lower values to the sampler. We also have choke groups. So when a sample is assigned to a choke group, what that means is it's only going to allow one of the samples on that choke group to play at a time. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna go ahead and put the open hat and the closed hat on choke group one. If I play the open hat, and then immediately play the closed hat after it, the closed hat will choke the open hat and cut it off. Without the choke group, they're both gonna kind of blend and play over each other. We can hear that the closed hat is not choking off the open hat. This is most commonly done with hi-hats because on an actual drum kit, the open and closed hat is actually the same piece of kit. And because it's the same instrument, you can really only get either closed or open hat, which is why the hats are one of the more common ones, but you can do this with any of these sounds. And it's also important to note, if you are triggering these with MIDI and you play both of them together at the same time, priority goes to the higher MIDI note. But if I were to come over here and swap these, instead of having this on F, I'll put it on G. Now we're gonna hear the open hat because the G is higher than F sharp. I also wanna note that any one of these chains can be set to accept all incoming MIDI notes, which is really useful if you wanna have a pitched instrument in with your drum rack. 
So I just threw an operator on here. And if I click on the receive, I can scroll all the way to the top and set this to all notes. Now this operator is not assigned to any one of these pads, but instead can be played like a normal instrument within the drum rack. So moving on to one of the more powerful, somewhat hidden features within drum rack is the fact that we can set up up to six return channels with effects in here. To access this, all you have to do is click this little button here with an R and you're gonna be presented with a new box that says drop audio effects here. Let's grab a reverb and throw that down here. And as soon as you add an effect, the little S button will be able to be clicked. This now shows you all of your sends. Let's add one more effect in here, a delay. So we have send A and send B. I wanna send a little bit of the snare to send A. Now we have some reverb on that snare and I'll send the clap to the delay. And maybe we'll throw some of the hats to the reverb as well. You can also use the return chains to sum together a few different sounds and apply the same processing to all of them. So if I throw a glue compressor down here, over here where it says audio two, I can set this to instead of rack output, be the glue compressor. So the entirety of this sound is being sent through this chain right here. Let's add the snare to this as well. And now we can dial in some compression on this. And now we can add some compression to the sum of these two channels right here. The output of the glue compressor then gets sent to the rack output, but it doesn't necessarily have to get sent to the rack output. You can also send the outputs of any of your return channels in the drum rack to any of the return channels that you have in your project. This allows you to send your drum rack sounds through the same return signals that you may be sending the synths, vocals, any other sound in your project through, so they all have the same kind of processing on them. I'm gonna delete these and show you how that works. It's getting a little bit cluttered here. So if I right click in here, I can choose create an empty return chain. So all this is doing is routing audio through. It won't have any effect because there's no effect on the sound, but I can send this audio to a long verb, which is my one return chain I have over here. What this means is I can now send individual sounds through my long reverb. If I had other sounds in this project, I might be sending them through this as well. And now they're all gonna be using the same reverb sound. Let's close up the IO section and take a look at some new sounds I added in here. Shaker one, two, and three. I added these three in to show you how you can nest sounds together within the drum rack. What I'm gonna do is highlight all three of these chains and press Command or Control if you're on a PC, G. What this has done is grouped these as a drum rack within the drum rack. I'll press Command R and name this Shakers. What this allows me to do is apply processing to all three of these together without having to use three copies of an EQ, for example. Let me grab an EQ8 and just drop it directly on the Shakers chain. Now each of these are going to be processed by the same EQ. Currently, the way this is set up is that each of these shakers are still responding to one incoming MIDI note each. G sharp, A, and B flat. But if you open up your IO section, we can now set the receive to just a single note. Let's say, for example, that G sharp one. Now, all three of these shakers are gonna be triggered simultaneously when I press G sharp. We're not getting any sound yet. That's because within the drum rack inside the drum rack, we have to hit the IO button and set each of these to receive from, in this case, note C3, because this chain is receiving G sharp one and sending C3, and it's sending C3 to this drum rack. So now we have to set this to listen to C3, otherwise it won't play back these samples. Now we're getting all three of these samples playing when I hit one note. If you don't wanna go through this whole process of assigning and reassigning incoming and outgoing MIDI notes, then there's actually a different way you can do this. All I have is one single shaker now. What I can do instead is group the instrument itself. What this does is create an instrument rack inside the drum rack and I can drop extra shaker sounds here and now all of these shakers will be triggered when I click this instrument rack. 
So I think this is a little bit of a faster way of doing it. Once you start stacking up a lot of sounds like this, it can start to get a little bit difficult to edit all of these. Let's say, for example, we need to turn the volume of all three of these up. They're all at negative 12 right now. Well, instead of going in here and typing negative six, negative six, and so on all the way through, what you can do is actually on just one of them, type the volume you want, right click and choose copy value to siblings. What that will do is it will copy that value to each of the chains that are inside the rack. Another example is if we want to pitch this up by three semitones, you can right click and choose copy value to siblings. And now we've transposed it up by three semitones. So the copy value to siblings is a great, great way to quickly make changes to groups of samples and instruments like this. I saved my best trick for last. Before I wrap up here, I wanna show you a really excellent way for you to set up what I call kind of an infinite drum rack. Fundamentally, what it is is a way for you to use a drum rack to quickly demo different sounds to choose the right one. So let's go ahead and make our drum rack. And to make this happen, we have to use a sampler, not a simpler. I'll drag my sampler onto one of these pads here. Now the sampler can contain up to 128 different samples. All I have to do is find the samples that I want and drag and drop them into the sampler. And I can either drop them into this zone section, which I get by clicking the little expansion arrow, or you could just drop them directly onto where it says drop sample here. I'm gonna throw 128 different snares in here. All right, I just dropped 119 in, so that means I have to add nine more. Let me just grab nine more here. 789. So once you have your 128 samples loaded into the sampler, click up here at the top where it says selector. This is where you can assign each of these samples to a single number. That way you can use the chain selector to scroll through all 128 samples and demo them. Click the very top sample, scroll to the bottom, hold shift and click the bottom one to select all 128. Right click and choose distribute ranges equally. This is assigned one sample to one number from zero to 127 for 128 total samples. If you right click this little blue rectangle up here and choose map to macro one, you can now use this macro to scroll through individual samples. Go ahead and rename this snare and you can go ahead and close your zone selector. I threw a little beat together here to demo this. And as I play this, what I'm gonna do is move this macro around so you can hear how we're previewing a bunch of different snares. Now, if you make one of these for each one of these 16 pads, so you have 128 different kick samples, 128 different hat samples, 128 different open hat samples, what this does is create a drum rack, which is basically infinite. Here's an example of one that I made a long time ago. I made like eight of these preloaded drum racks. And this allows me to hit the random button and randomize all of these different samplers. Each one of these is loaded up with 128 different options, which allows me to quickly scroll through just tons of different options for drum kits. If you find one you like, all you have to do is right click that macro, choose exclude macro from randomization. And now whenever you click the random button, that macro stays on the drum sound that you found, allowing you to continually scroll through all of your samples to find different combinations that work for you. Using drum racks in this way starts to really show you how incredibly powerful these instruments are. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.